see Paul Jackman, also known as the off grid nomad. Now, Paul's recently bought himself a loading down T244, had it converted to a low, an overland truck. Also, with us today, we have Roxy. And if you follow Paul, you would, I'm sure you would see Roxy in probably most of his videos. So, Paul, you recently bought this, this truck, um, and I believe you've named her Millie. Um, why did you buy this and what did you have before? Um, yeah, so I've, before I bought this, I had a, a Transit Jumbo. Uh, it was all fully converted, it was sort of off road, um, but I had that in a narrow boat. Um, obviously from a split from my wife, so I, I wanted an alternative lifestyle, so I bought the narrowboat and bought, you know, already had the camper. Um, and, you know, basically the best of both worlds at the time, until I watched your videos on Just Escape, <laughs> and then converted me into looking for a great big overlander. So, so how, long, how long did you live in your van, Paul? Um, the original one, I was in it for about 18 months, um, with you know, on and off with the boat. Um, basically, used to cut drive to work because it was an hour's drive, live at work, and, and then basically drive back to the boat. And then all I ended up using it for was doing my washing and then getting the camper and driving off into the Peak District. Um, and that's basically what I did, it was just joining the van life community. And what was your big motivation to? Go bigger. Um, well, I never even thought of it. I never even thought of them. It was only I was sat in the P district. I was watching loads of overlanding type of videos, and I started watching the Just Escape ones. <laughs> it just talked to me. Now it wasn't a daff I was after, um, because I'd seen um, the mannequin of Campervan Culture, yeah. and that's the one I wanted. That hooked me because I, I had a passion for Volkswagens. I've had all the you know the old Volkswagen campers and stuff, and I thought, oh, that'd be a, a way to branch back into the Volkswagen world and a real big you know monster motorhome as well. You've had this for two months now, is that right? Just before the lockdown, so yeah, it'd be. I think that was the end of. It was two, three months, yeah. How do you find this compared to the van? Um, obviously slower um, and sort of fuel. Um, apart from that. Absolute doddle. Um, nothing really changes it. The size doesn't bother me um, at all. Yeah, you say your van was a jumbo. You could stand it up. Was a it. jumbo, yeah. So it was a good, good big size truck. You know, it was the biggest one you can get at the high top, yeah. long, extra long. So I mean, all right, it's not like this, but you get that. And I've had all you know bigger vehicles as well in the past, so you know I'm pretty used to. How do you how do you find it from a driver's perspective, the, the driving experience? Yeah, I quite like it. I mean, some people like, you know, a bit funny, but I quite enjoy the cap, the, you know, the vision. And everything. The, the height is nice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, but yeah, was it, it steering's brilliant, you know. Well, I think one of the big things you find from a car, obviously a van is a little bit different to a car, but the, the height that you can see, lot, you see a lot more, because mm. the UK countryside is hedgerows, isn't it? Yeah. And you can now see over those hedgerows. Yeah. And you see a lot more you couldn't see before. Yeah, I mean the van was like that, you know, because it was quite high, but yeah. I mean, yeah, you are a bit higher, but uh, alright, you can't overtake things unless it's a tractor, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's driving, I've seen, you know, I've only sort of driven, what, sort of two hours, you know, that was sort of the way to Derbyshire, but I did have a little breakdown in between. <laughs> and that's all now fixed now? Yeah, yeah, that was just a fuel leak. Um, and obviously sucking in air, so you know the old common one with the fuel lines. So everyone needs to change the fuel lines. What are your plans for Millie? Um, well, this was built just to do the UK. We did it as lightweight as possible. Um, it could go, you know, you can go, you know, abroad with it and stuff. But it was primarily built just to tour the UK with my kids. Um, you know. So. On the you say you've got this is seven and a half tons, you've got it light. Yeah, that's because you're license. You have a license for seven and a half tons, that right? Yeah, yeah, it goes up seven and a half tons. So just did it right to the limit on this. And was that a challenge to get it under there, under seven and a half? Yeah, you have to be careful. I mean, look enough. It was all custom built, so it's like all the furniture is the proper lightweight furniture board. Um, you know, we did away with cupboards and stuff there to try and keep it lighter. Um, the whole body 
is just all the plastic, you know, with the insulation, like a freezer box lorry. It's not aluminium lined. Um, even the roof rack's not steel with the dat and aluminium, you know. So. And you have two kids. Yep. Um, plenty of space for you and the two kids. Yeah, I mean that's the one of the beauty with the space with the with it being so wide, you can literally get two people walking past you. Where you, you know in the old van, it's just a narrow little corridor. Um, it was like a little coffin, really. You know, it's. And uh, it feels nice and warm in here. It's good stable temperature, yeah. In the, in the composite yeah, the, with this body, it just keeps a constant temperature. I, don't, I very rarely have the heating on. I've, you know, literally, if I do put the heating on, it's like for a half an hour, and just to take a chill out. And that was only sort of when it was a bit colder. But I mean, now it's. It just stays warm for some reason. And has Roxy adapted to truck life? Oh, uh, she'll adapt to anything as long as she's got it, she can sleep. So, yeah. So, if anybody wanted to, was considering upgrading or, go, or going bigger from a van to a truck this kind of size, what would you say to them? Just do it. Uh, I do know because a lot of the friends in the van life world have started buying like things like horse boxes and they're going up to Lutons now and sort of you know making them bigger so they're all going that one step more and I knew this with the overlanders they're all you know they're all like oh I, I want one I want and they've all done the vans out with the big wheels and snorkels and you know and it seems to be a new thing now and the van life community is moving into it if you look at all the vans um, I mean even Gadget John um, he's big on YouTube, you know, he's just bought a brand new motor but the first thing he's done, great big 4 before wheels, <laughs> you know, so you don't get stuck and stuff, so, you know, it is a, I think the joy, they're, they are merging now. What is the biggest positive about having a bigger vehicle like this? Um, now the only one thing I can think of at the moment is, like, because it's such a wow factor, and the amount of people who stop and you know film it and look at it. I think when I had the van, no one sort of looked at you, and then but when they knew you was living in it, sort of there was a bit of a stigma in yeah, a way. Yeah. That, you know, there's a van life sort of stigma. In this, I don't seem to get it no more. They just look at you different. People do. Um, that's one definitely thing I've noticed. You know, people are like wow, what is it? You know, and want to know more. And what is the Biggest, what's a negative about having such a big vehicle? I haven't found one yet. <laughs> Not yet. Um, I mean, obviously, the basics are just you know, you're heavy on fuel, yeah. Um, and maybe I'm gonna find places where I can't get to because of the height and the width, yeah, because the height and the width. I know in Dar you know, in the peak districts and stuff, there is little narrow roads which I know this won't go down, so you'd have to do a longer trip round, but. You know that you compensate for having such a big home. To Any future plans to travel out of the UK? Um, yeah, I mean, I want to do all sort of, you know, the Alps and um, the P Pyrenees and you know, sort of all over. But my awkward thing is because I've got custody. You know, we sort of share the kids, and I, you know, I've got them at weekends and I work shifts. It's just so hard to get mm. so much time off to you know to travel. Um, it's just an awkward situation with them being so young and still at school. So, you know, the plan is the next five years is just do England. I mean, I haven't done Wales. I've never been to Scotland, you know, and I haven't been right down south. I've done Yorkshire, Derbyshire and Lincolnshire. That's about it, really. So lots, so lots to explore. Loads to explore. And it's like a lot of people do. They just go, oh, let's go to Europe. I miss England out totally. No, so the more I explore that parts of the far, far reaches of the world, the more I feel I need to see. Now, I've, I've been I've been well in Scotland, but there's so much to see. Mm. And the more I travel, the more I feel I want to see more of our home home territory. Yeah. I mean Scotland. I mean I, I watched a friend of mine, Ash Pollard, and he filmed Scotland. Absolutely amazing. You know, and got the drones out. And he was just like jaw dropping. You know, it's just like I need to go there. So that's the plans. Scotland's definitely on the plans for this year. Okay, well, thanks, Paul. And you're on YouTube as the Off Grid Nomad, is that right? Yeah, it's Off Grid Nomad on all social platforms. So it's on Twitter, um, Instagram, and Facebook, all the Off Grid Nomad. So if you want to follow Paul, see where he ends up, um, check him out. 
Uh, lots of videos on your build, is that right? Yeah, yeah, the full build's all on it and um, everything, warts and all, from breaking down to trips. Hi right, guys, check out Paul in the Off Grid Nomad. Thanks for watching, um, subscribe and like to see more.